testing one, two, three. Welcome to Lens, to the Felix Borgard Stadium in the coal mining town of Lens, which is some three hours away from Paris. It's the quarterfinal playoff, Ireland against Argentina, and it promises to be one of the great matches of Rugby World Cup 1999. It's a magnificent setting here in Lens. The atmosphere is building up. It's a very cold evening. The temperature is around about the 10, 11 degrees centigrade mark, and this is how Ireland finished runners-up in Pool E. They beat the Americans 53-8. They lost to Australia 23 points to 3. They beat Romania 44 points to 14 at Lansdowne Road. All three matches in the city of Dublin for Ireland. And Ireland finishing runners-up. Argentina in Pool D. They finished in third. They are the third best-placed team in Rugby World Cup. They lost to Wales in the opening match 23-18. They came back strongly in a magnificent performance to beat Samoa 32-16 uh, at Fnetley and they beat Japan at the Millennium Stadium 33-12. different tactics from each side as Ireland run onto the pitch and Argentina walk rather sedately. This is a massive fixture for Ireland, it is a massive fixture for Argentina.
Ireland's team shows changes from that which beat Romania in Dublin, the return of Bishop and Mostyn on the wings, O'Driscoll with Mags in the centre, and getting the vote for the number 10 shirt is David Humphreys ahead of Eric Elwood. Reggie Corrigan playing on loose head in his first World Cup match. Argentina favour the young 21-year-old Corletto at fullback in a very steady backline of Camardon, Simone, the captain Arbizu and Albanese. There's the little dynamo in T-shot at scrum half with the prolific kicker Quesada at fly half. It's a pack that loves to shove opponents around the ground and they'll be looking to out-scrummage Ireland. That'll be a huge task indeed. There is Quesada, the leading point scorer in Rugby World Cup 99 with 66 points. Stuart Dickinson, young referee from Australia representing the new breed of young referees for whom respect is gained on both sides, Argentina and Ireland. This is a hugely emotional evening already the anthems sung with great gusto for Ireland. They're looking to make their fourth World Cup quarter-final. They've appeared in quarter-finals in all three previous World Cups. Argentina have never been there. It'll be a first for Argentina if they beat Ireland in loss tonight. Gonzalo Quesada gets the game underway. And straight away it goes to Keith Wood, a former captain of Ireland. Nine times he's led the side in the heart of the battle all the time. Connor O'Shea, his first kick of the match, and is it a good one? He found it, oh, that must have been in touch. He fielded the ball with one foot outside the tram lines. It was a very good touch anyway by Connor O'Shea, the fullback Ignacio Corletto. Sitting alongside me, Brendan Mullen, former Ireland centre and captain and British Lion. What a great kick, we were just sort of saying, would it actually roll in? In fact, it went to their advantage, and the Argentinian had to actually put the ball in. Great start from Ireland's perspective, great kick from Conor O'Shea and Ireland have the line out now to attack. Keith Wood looking for Jeremy Davidson, two big targets in the Irish line. That's uh, in fact Andy Ward who's wearing six tonight. He's a, definitely an open side but he's wearing six with the very impressive Kieran Dawson wearing seven. Ireland with uh, the weight advantage. The scrummage just on the Argentinian 22. Pichot with a put in and a penalty straight away to Argentina. And it's Paul Wallace, the man who's been spoken to by the referee. Now that's interesting because Paul Wallace is one of the game's most respected and most experienced prop forwards. A lion in South Africa in 97. One tends to get the feeling that it's a night where Paul Wallace will come into his own. Well, the Irish pack very much selected for this particular game. Okay, the Argentinians very strong scrum as you can see there. And just driving Ireland forward, but the Irish have picked a pack that's more mobile, and I think they're taking the chance that they'll hold their own in the scrum and hopefully win the loose ball and run the Argentina around. Mario Ledesma, the Pumas hooker, his 22nd cap tonight. And to the back it goes. Pichot to Quesada. Ireland's defence in midfield is strong, and they've turned it over. It's a penalty, Ireland. That's a good psychological blow for the men in green. Ireland taking the ball from the Pumas, looking to work a midfield move. I have to say, fairly naive rugby there from Argentina. Uh, a very simple skip pass with the player coming in, not even moving his defender. Kevin Maggs and Brian O'Driscoll, fairly solid in the middle of the field. And uh, not only did he tackle him behind Argentina's game line, but uh, Ireland won the, won the ball from the two and Argentina had to, pin, uh, had to go over for the penalty. Here you can see uh, the Irish player on the other side, but Ireland haven't won the ball. And uh, I think that was Omar Hassan. I'm doing a bit of uh, dancing on uh, one of the Irish players' backs. 
Um, but slightly naive play, and I think Argentina uh, may well have to recognise the fact that they uh, are going to win this up front. David Humphreys, outside half. Recall to the side, his first kick at goal, it is a beauty. David Humphreys opens his account, he opens Ireland scoring. And Ireland has struck first blow, they lead by three points to nil. What a great kick. He's right on halfway. Hardly any wind to talk about here because the stadium is sheltered. And uh, he had no problem getting to the ball post. It's a great start from Ireland's perspective. Very good defence. Good attacking setup to start it all off. And they're 3 0 ahead. Casada with the restart. Up goes O'Kelly. Six foot eight. O'Kelly, one of the tallest men on the ground tonight. And that's Tom Tierney, the man from Gary Owen, who puts that for Gary Owen. Taken by Albanese. Pichot waits for the ball to come back. It's with the scrum half. Quesada. Holds it high. Underneath it is Conor O'Shea. And the London Irish man is solid as a house at the back. He's had a great World Cup. O'Shea, here he goes. He's broken through two or three tackles. Tierney now. A wonderful pick up by Humphreys. And Ireland have worked it out. Matt Moston. Cuts back inside, it's a thundering tackle on him. Ireland's Australian born winger on the left wing, wearing 11. But it's a penalty to Argentina. Ireland too keen to dive in on the ball to get the ball back. You must stay on your feet. It's been the call for referees from referees throughout the tournament. Absolutely right. And Mastin actually making it slightly difficult for his uh, supporting players there because it actually been turned the wrong way. But just an indication here we see O'Driscoll releasing the ball very nicely. Mastin's got a bit of room, sort of weighs it up, goes outside, changes his mind, comes back in. His fall was slightly awkward, and I think he went yeah, quite down the wrong way. Argentinian body in front of it. Ireland penalised for going over the top. Ledesma now with the throw. It's picked up by. Rolando Martin, the oldest player in the Argentinian side at just 31 years of age. That was Vigiado doing the work on the ground, and Cassette has lost it. Oh, and David Humphreys couldn't quite take it. Some cold fingers out there. It's only five degrees centigrade in Lens tonight. Watch this. Ooh, that was close. David Humphreys knew it. What a great contest this will be. Vigiado Ledesma Hassan against Corrigan. Wood and Wallace. Three British Lions, three Lions in the Ireland pack. With Wood, Wallace and Jeremy Davidson. Steady there. Lions to South Africa, 97. It's a quick penalty taken by Tierney. Worked away again to Moston. He's got no room on the outside. He had to cut back inside. He now wants his forwards to do their job. They have. Humphreys, it's Keith Wood running off Humphreys. And he is buried by Omar Hassan. It's a high tackle deemed by Stuart Dickinson, Omar Hassan. Double tackle there by the Argentinians on Wood, obviously man marking him. And uh, Wood is liable to clear uh, in the back at any time, but definitely quite rightly blown there for a very high tackle uh, by Hassan on Wood. Another chance for Humphreys to, to put it over, and certainly he's got the distance. David Humphreys recalled to the side, he didn't play against Romania. Wearing the 10 jersey that night was Eric Elwood, and he had a magnificent game. But Humphreys, the Ulster captain, is the man in charge, and the man wearing the number 10 shirt, and he's put over his second penalty. Two wonderful kicks from Humphreys, it's six points to nil. And Ireland are on top in these early stages. <laughs> Sather with his 66 points as the leading scorer in Rugby World Cup. And amazingly, he's not yet kicked a conversion. That's O'Kelly. So a wonderful World Cup. O'Kelly has cemented his place on the side. Tierney. That's gone straight up in the air, not too much distance on it. Taken nicely by Gonzalo Longo, the number eight for Argentina. On the halfway line, just inside Ireland's half. Two shot, cheeky little chip from the scrum half. Nicely anticipated by Conor O'Shea, but not well fielded. This is, could be a great drive by Argentina. It is their ball. Two shot. 
Casada back inside. There was a green reception committee for him. Number four, holding on there to take it. It's a penalty, Argentina. Here you can see the replay. Conor O'Shea, box kick in there, and he drops the ball. That's an unforced error. And Conor O'Shea has been guilty of a couple of those in the World Cup uh, so far. It gives Argentina a chance to take their three points, and certainly Posada is a man who doesn't miss too many, certainly not from uh, this distance. Gonzalo Posada kicked six penalty goals against Wales. He kicked eight against Samoa and a drop goal. He kicked seven penalties against Japan. Argentina have only scored three tries in Rugby World Cup, not a conversion put over by this man. But he's prolific, and he takes an age to line the ball up. All the booing in the ground won't put this man off. Gonzalo Quesada, his first kick at goal for the Pumas. Oh, and it's sailed through the uprights. The kickers are on four. Casada replies to two David Humphreys penalties. It's six points to three. A magnificent goal kick there by Casada. He's uh, to admire it, right? Uh, straight bang between the posts. But three fantastic goal kicks to date in this match. Humphreys with two, Casada with one. Perfectly struck, all of them. Up goes the number four for Argentina, that is Fernandez Lobby. Two young locks in this Argentinian pack. Fernandez Lobby wearing four and Alejandro Ayub, only 24 and 23 years of age. But this is where the game could well be won tonight. These front rows. Corrigan, Wood and Wallace for Ireland. It's solid, it's picked up by O'Kinnigan, the captain of Ireland. Tierney. He's got Wood alongside him, they've used this one already, that's a terrific drive again by Davidson. It's laid back again now for Tierney, Humphreys. Well, that's a tremendous pass by O'Kelly to Mustin. Mustin taken down by Corretto, a great tackle by the fullback. It's still Ireland's ball, Tierney, Humphreys. Wood again, he's playing like a centre three-quarter. It's inside the Pumas 22, Humphreys with the drop kick. Is it there? It's just wide. Fantastic play by Ireland, and Wood is in the middle of it. Very close by Humphreys there, really just looking to uh, consolidate and get some points for their attacking move. But as you say, Keith Wood, clearly Ireland really trying to play a mobile game. Keith Wood out in the centre is taking a lot of ball on. Brendan, I know we've seen some uh, stirring play by Ireland in the matches uh, that we've seen them at Lansdowne Road, but don't you get the feeling that this has just stepped up a gear from the word go? Very much so. The pace of the match is much higher. Ireland are absolutely committed to the thing, and of course it's all that serious now because it's knockout stuff. Whoever loses goes home tomorrow. First touch for Justin Bishop, the Englishman. He plays for London Irish, English born, I should say, proudly wearing the Irish shirt. Humphreys, the long pass along the line it goes, and that's Kevin Maggs who's dumped in midfield. Wood again, how many times has he had his hands on the ball? It's on the halfway line. Argentina putting in some big hits on the Irish boys. Going in at scrum half is Malcolm O'Kelly. Humphreys with the kick, and back goes Diego Albanese. He's a tricky little customer, this man. Weaving magical circles. Pichot now, back. Tremendous play and a huge thump by Wood. On Fernandez lobby. How the heck they're going to play 80 minutes of this? I'll never know. Casada. Ireland regrouping. It's with Conor O'Shea inside his 22. A spiralling kick that goes over the head of Maurizio Reggiado. The huge front row forward for Argentina. Lovely step here. Look, bang off his right. Sends Bishop inside, lovely run by Albanese. Thank you. Sort of in fact cuts back into the field to set up Argentina. They can run a bit, uh, but the pace is uh, really extraordinary tonight. Both teams playing at a high pace, and it suits Ireland. They've got a, a mobile pack to this game. They want to play it mobile, they want to move away from the lineouts and scrums, and certainly the game suits them. At the 
Argentina's ball, Bishop to Casaba. Where you go? Kick by the outside half. Finally plays for the Hindu club, and of course for Buenos Aires, winning his 21st cap tonight for his country. What a World Cup Heathwood is having. Another step. Another step. Another Nine step. tries under his belt now. And four of those came no, in no. one match. Cross your cup. Against cross you go. United cross States. you go. Number four. Wood. Finds Davidson at the front for Ireland. It's a good jump Last by the please. Ulster man. Tierney waits. Away you go, uses, Ron. uses the Gary Owen. Back goes Gonzalo Camardon. That's nicely played by the Pumas right winger. Play on, says the referee. Corretto couldn't take it. This is O'Kunigan. He's got bags of pace. The pass is out to O'Shea. Now with Bishop. Play on! Justin Bishop. He's done well. He's broken through three or four tackles and he's buried on the 22. Ireland must get quick ball on the blind side. Humphreys is there. So too is Dawson. And it's offside against Argentina. Again, Taysom O'Kunigan here, ball through to O'Shea. Loose pass to Bishop, but he cuts in, does very well to set the whole thing up, taking about three or four Argentinian defenders there. Ireland looking for a very quick ball, in fact, the Argentinians were offside. And Humphreys is another opportunity to take three points. David Humphreys, who led that wonderful campaign by Ulster last season. When Ulster won the European Cup, they beat Toulouse, they beat Colombia in the final. They beat Stade Francais, and here they are in Lens. Some three hours from Paris, to the northeast of Paris, it's a coal mining town, it's a bitterly cold evening in Lens. But the Irish are playing the warmest rugby of the Rugby World Cup so far. Humphreys for Ireland for his third penalty goal. Oh, he's in majestic form is David Humphreys. He looks so composed. It's nine points to three. More points coming for David Humphreys. Again, you just have to comment that the goal kicking standard in the World Cup in general has been absolutely tough cast, but Humphreys hitting the ball really well tonight, really striking it right in the middle of the ball and it's sailing right through the post every time. Casada, but he starts. It's O'Kelly underneath it. What an important man he is for Ireland's cause. Malcolm O'Kelly. There's no place in this side for Paddy Johns and there is Pierre Bilpreur, the French coach, and Jean-Claude Strela, his assistant. And of course, it's France who are already in the quarter-final in Dublin. That's the incentive. Picked up at the back now by Longo to Rolando Martin, the back row in harness. Pichot, Quesada, Arbisu, the captain. Terrific tackle going in by Kevin Maggs. Now with Eduardo Simone, we're in 13. Pichot, oh, there were men over. And Quesada has gone for the drop goal. It's just so wide. Yeah, Casada unusually dismissing the, the post for a change anyhow. Um, you'd have to say, I think both out halves recognising the importance of this match and how tight it's going to be. Both of them willing to take uh, a pot of goal when they got a chance. Uh, the gone wide there, the score remains 9 3. Casada really didn't look at. Uh, it wasn't an overlap, but he did have two men outside, two, three quarters. Opted for the kick. David Humphreys restarts. He shot. Oh, well taken and taken also by Matt Austin. It's just inside Ireland's half. It's a big, beefy back, this Argentinian back. But they are conceding the slight weight advantage to Ireland. Quesada, Arbisu, the captain. Oh, he stepped inside his man. That was Kevin Maggs, he stepped inside. Taken up now by Rolando Martin. And tackles have been missed. Here goes Corretto, the fullback. It's tremendous run by the young 20-year-old. Pichot slips from the pass. This is tremendous continuity by the Pumas. It still hasn't been knocked on. That was a wonderful surge by Argentina. And Ireland must be mindful of the counter-attack and the tackles missed. Very much so. That's a good example of how Argentina can play. 
We haven't seen too much of that from him in the tournament so far, but a lovely uh, break initially, I think, by Martina from Rosella. And uh, carried on there by Argentina. Two very good passes of play they've had so far. Here's Martin, takes the ball up. Lovely step inside and outside. Pass Knight. Takes off and makes the initial break. Then we see uh, Coletto taking the ball through there. Taking it on. Then she hauled down by two or three defenders. Albanese in there. And there we saw Casada taking the top ball. And I think it's off that particular rock the Irish would come out. This might well prove to be a kicking duel between two marksmen, Gonzalo Casaba for Argentina and David Humphreys for Ireland. But take my word for it, this is a quite incredible stadium tonight. And the pace at which this game is being played. Casaba deliberate in his approach, methodical. Successful. Another wonderful kick from the outside half. What a duel we're having. Here again we can see the initial break by Martin. Passing through there to Lenti to Coletto. Makes a lovely step inside Conor Shea. Again, he's really got to close that angle down. Mags well back to tackle and in, in as well goes Bishop. Dawson's there to collect the ball, but off that they were penalised. Ireland start again. The restart with Ireland leading nine points to six, and that's well taken by Alejandro Aliou. What a responsibility he took over from Herman Danes, the manager who was in the Supreme for Argentina for many years, played for the Bath Club. Ireland giving away penalties. Number six, well, that's the penalty. Andy Ward wearing six, the New Zealand born flanker. I'm not sure he's allowed the man to play the ball. Aliu wins it. Coming up at real pace was Lisandro Arvisu, and he's followed by Dawson. But we've seen it so many times. The referee saying that the first man there to the tackle area must be on his feet. Arbiza going down, the referee's actually blown him and just said you've got to stay up. So they really are being very strict on that uh, ruling. First man into the rough must stay on his feet. Here we see Arbizu taking a very flat ball. Good tackle by Dawson. Dawson's on the far side. Yep. And uh, then Santiago feeling straight to ground and that's what uh, the penalty was for. Argentina's 22. Keith Wood with a throw. He finds Malcolm O'Kelly and Wood takes the pass again. Going 100 miles an hour is Keith Wood, and this is Malcolm O'Kelly. It's a double act. O'Kelly and Wood from the line out. It's got to be Ireland's ball. Tierney to Wallace. Paul Wallace, a thumping barge of Reggiardo. Pumps him out of the way, and Wood three times he's touched the ball. Wallace his second time. Great defense from the Pumas, and it's loose ball. It's picked up by Fernandez Lobe. Pichot. Reggiardo turns, wants support. Let's get started. It's on the Pumas 22. <laughs> it will be a penalty to uh, to Argentina. Stuart Dickinson's going to squirt get out of this match, I can tell you. Yeah, Luis Ayrton <laughs> sticking in there on Pichot's uh, pass. Very good defence by Argentina. You've got to admire it. They uh, just regrouped Wallace, Wood, or Kelly all running at them. Defended stoutly, came away with the ball, and Casada's put them back into uh, the Irish half. Can Keith Wood keep this up for 80 minutes, Brendan? Well, I certainly think, I mean, in previous years, it, it's always been a criticism of Irish teams that they've blown up after 40, 60 minutes. They're going in good pace, they are fit, they've done a lot of work for this World Cup, and uh, I think they'll last the pace. Paul Wallace plays for the Saracens in London. He's a cork man, and he's a wonderful prop. His 34th cap, but it's won by 
Ayub, Alejandro Ayub for Argentina from the line out. Bishop, Gesada, Arbisu running off, and this is Rolando Martin, and tackled by his opposite number, Dawson. It's Argentina's ball. Bishot, Fernandez Lobe. And they mean business, the humors, and it's a penalty, Argentina. Island Pinlai going in, not staying on their feet. And it's going to be number four, Jeremy Davidson. He's going to be spoken to. Do collapse them all, yeah, do collapse them all down there. Okay, that's twice a bit involved in penalties there. Too many skipper. Let's work on it, thanks. Now, Stuart Dickinson has had a word with uh, the captain, Fiona Finnegan. He said that Jeremy Davidson was penalised for pulling down the mall. That's one offence two minutes ago, and this is another occasion where he felt that he infringed and dived in over the top. Jeremy Davidson. Well, the referee is very strict now on trying to keep play up and upright and moving. And they're going to penalise uh, any people who are going to lie in on the ball or pull malls down, as he's indicated there. That's the second time, in fact, Davidson uh, was called for that in the last five minutes. And I think uh, certainly the referee is unhappy with him. He's going to penalise them. And if we give this guy penalties, uh, he's going to convert them. It really is a study in concentration. What a shot that is. Gonzalo Posada for his... Third penalty for Argentina to level the scores at nine points each. Posada, oh, beautifully struck again. The flags go up. Posada is playing the role for his team that he's played throughout this World Cup. He's simply kicking the points. So we see the reverse angle on that. Argentina going down, and you can see the second Irish player in there and collapses on top of the uh, rough. Referee's not going for that at all. It's going to blow Ireland every time, and Argentina if they want to do that. The sense that Argentina have come back into this match, they certainly accepting the physical challenge. And so much so that they've uh, infringed, it. and that is a penalty straight away to Ireland, and it'll go straight away to David Humphreys. That's just uh, silly stuff. <laughs> and in fact, uh, the man, the hooker, just stands in front, barges the Irish forward from the two, and uh, having won the three points just a minute ago, they've just given it away, and uh, I think Humphries will strike us again. I'm not sure how malicious that was, Brendan, but uh, the intent was there. He stood in the way. Humphreys for Ireland. It's there. It's three more points. That's four successful kicks now for David Humphreys. It's 12 points to nine. Ireland lead, and the flags have been waved. That's a lot of penalties. Certainly, Stuart Dickinson is uh, taking his role very seriously tonight. As he said, probably a marginal call there just a minute ago against Argentina, but uh, that's the way the rules are going to be played, and uh, people have to adjust to them. Got everything in this match so far, everything got a try that is. And this man's in possession. Something always happens, Keith Wood. It's back with Humphreys. Humphreys to clear the decks, who hasn't. Back there is the fullback, Matthew Corletto. Up she goes. That's not a bad kick. But Keith Wood, oh what a take by the hooker. An astonishing take this. Watch this. Good Gaelic football take there. Up two-handed off the ground. Caught by two Argentinian players. And I'm very fortunate to get the scrum on that because the ball popped out very quickly. I think Dickinson in fact had blown uh, before the ruck had actually or before the ball had actually popped out of the ruck. This doesn't look very good. Jeremy yes, Davidson has taken a bump. The man who plays for the Castro Olympic Club in France. And there's also another Castro player. There you go, Jeremy Davidson. Another one is Maurizio Reggiado playing in the front row for Argentina tonight. Those two okay. are clubmates here in France. But they mean business tonight as opponents. 
Watch your steady and straight, thanks. Hold! Hold okay. On this side of the scrimmage at loose head for the injured steady Peter Clarcy. Big job for him tonight. Picked up by O'Quinnigan. Dawson's the first man in there, he's done his job. Humphreys drills it downfield, that's a good looking kick. But well placed is Corretto, 21 year old. And that's a good kick too. That's a lovely clearance kick by Corletto on the wrong side technically of the pitch for him. As a right footed kicker, screwed the ball just beautifully right into the touchline there. Did very well. Andy Ward with the, the snake skin. White line in the middle, keep going. Keep going. Alexander yeah. McQueen number, is it? O'Kelly oh, wins it. Man with five in his back. Rhode Island. No, come out, come out, goes come out. Omar Hassan. Just about onside. And right to the side of the rack. Wood, look at the work that Keith Wood is doing there. And so too is Paul Wallace. And the penalty against Argentina. He felt that uh, the referee, that is, that too many came in from the wrong side to that driving ball. What a good kick by David Humphreys. It must have been a close call when Humphreys got the vote ahead of Elwood. This is Malcolm O'Kelly. Lovely take from the Irish line out there. Forward pass driving in, there's his Carrigan. Under the forward in, under the Argentinian guys coming on the wrong side of him. It's five metres from Argentina's goal line. Up went O'Kelly and Ireland driving for that goal line. Tierney now. Tierney with Wallace hanging off him. There he is, the prop for Ireland. It's come back on Ireland's side, but it's a penalty Ireland. Santiago Filan is the flanker who's been spoken to by the referee, holding on to the man, not allowing Ireland to play the ball. Another transgression, and it means another chance for David Humphreys. And this should really be bread and butter. You see it on the replay. She didn't even come in okay, but the referee had just flown uh, the holding, as you say, in the rock before that. Probably the easiest penalty for uh, Humphreys this evening. Humphreys, three points, penalty number five. For the man born in Belfast, former Oxford Blue, the man who came for Dungannon, and now tonight for Ireland. Who lead 59. Good restart by Casada. Oh, I've got to take again. Kelly has had a mountains game for Ireland, and that is O'Quinnigan. Look at the work by the South African born man. Ireland in his 17th test and that is a wonderful drive it's a walking ball by Ireland and how do Argentina stop it Tierney, Humphreys men running off the ball, in comes Justin Bishop, he's tackled by Simone Ireland looking to do things behind the stand they're looking to work men around both centres missed out that time certainly Ireland looking to play a mobile game get their pack moving around the place Bishop coming in there, but slightly here you see the great uh, rolling mall from Ireland. Really did set that sort of thing from Argentina. But all eight, all, all eight in there. Ball no, one no, 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 just comes back to no, Bishop. No, Unfortunately, no, they're, they're running no, slightly behind the line. Steady, and from, steady, uh, steady, steady. Goes to Ireland. Just past the line. It's a restless scrummage. And the referee doesn't want that to be taken quickly. He wants a word, first of all. 
with the Argentinian front row. It's a marginal call, but uh, you've got two heavyweight packs here, two experienced packs, two packs who love the art of scrimmage. It's a little bit sad to see them committing penalties, but here now is Paul Wallace. Humphreys. Oh, it's a quick pass by Kevin Max. Play on, says the referee. Max has got his hands on the ball, so too is Dawson. Dawson is everywhere for Ireland, as he was against Romania. Wood. And Pichot goes back. Definitely kick there from Keith Wood. Spotted a Driscoll on the right hand side. It's the build up, in fact. Good pass from Mags to, to Wood, who actually missed it. Driscoll set it up here. Back into Dawson, and here we see the ball comes out. Keith Wood. Definitely chip and push out back to third for the Argentines. Omar Hassan, the uh, top at the front of the line out for the Pumas, plays his rugby for Agen here in France. Right through the hands of Rolando Martin, and Dawson was first man there for Ireland. Straight wasn't throw. Ireland get the call. It's 15 points to nine. Five David Humphreys penalties. Three Gonzalo Pizarro penalties. It's inside the Pumas 22. And Paul Wallace. That's the second time the referee's spoken to Paul Wallace about binding properly and about the way he is scrummaging. McQuinnigan with the control. Look at Pishop. What a nuisance he is. Oh, here's a tremendous move. It's Kevin Max. But the pass is forward. I thought Max was through for a moment, just a moment. He knew it. Very unlucky. Uh, Ice came in lovely, had jinked outside, came in and took a very flat pass. Here we see ball from Tierney. Humphreys, very marginal. Uh, Argentina back in, in defence, anyhow, but a marginal call. In fact, I have to say that uh, the referee tonight has been absolutely by the book. Stuart Dickinson uh, playing everything. In fact, uh, just penalised Argentina a couple of minutes ago for going to the scrum too aggressively, as far as I could see it. And I, I really think he's got to have a bit of leeway. We've already had. Uh, the best Stoke part of the penalties. This is not my problem, it's your problem. You'll give away the penalties, you'll give away the three points. Steady I and really straight do feel, and Brendan, square. this is a part of the game that the international board must look at. Thank you. You've got men who are skilled in the art of scrummaging, and it's, the game is taking their skill out of it. Just hot, no, When you've got so much talk there, T O R Q U E, there. not T A L K. Crouch was hold, engage so there, energy. thank you. To keep it steady, to keep it straight, is almost an impossible task. Steady, stay in the gap. It's won by Argentina. Yes, away you go, away you go, you're on now. Huge kick downfield. Back goes Matt Mostyn. Conor O'Shea, he's outside his 22. Stay, 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 seven! Okay. His opposite number, Porletto, he's outside his 22, and that's skewed off the outside of his boot. The last man in defence for Ireland is their captain, O'Quinnigan. He's not going to run across his 22. He thought about it. And that's a better option. A man born in Cape Town. He went to Stellenbosch University. He's a former South African schools cricketer and athlete. Thank you. 
it's in the it's a difficult game at the best of times to referee, but he's calling Tom! penalties against the big men. Brenda, you call it. Oh, well, there's John Davis goes up, he's held up in the air. Falls onto the ground, there he is. Gabe Robertson is quite impacted by both of them. The ball, the ball is coming to the referee blows. So Davis is being outside. He's going to be on his own. He's going to be on his own. Finds his man, finds Alejandro Alouf. That's the Irish 22. Take a ball, Gandhi. Uh, Kelly was at the bottom of that. Right in time to tackle him. Right in forward. A couple of bruises in this side. No, no, just crouch. Thank you. Hold. Steady. Two shots. Oh, and Albanese came in. A rate of knots, but he's lost it. It's a Driscoll now for Ireland. The tackle going in by Longo. Ward. Picked up by Kinnigan. Second time for Ward. Tierney. Humphreys drills it into the Pumas 22. Corletto. This is Camardon. Gonzalo Camardon has done well. He's only 28 years of age, but he played in the 91 Rugby World Cup. They have Albanese knocking on from the ruck. Dawson and Humphreys going in for the tackle, and lucky that Ireland couldn't pick him on there. Space, please. Space, please. He's an injured man. We just caught a glimpse of him in your picture there on the Irish 22. It is. Kieran Dawson, the man who's injured. And Ireland don't want an injury to him. Ireland, of course, beat Argentina in a pre-World Cup warm-up match in August at Lansdowne Road. They beat them by 32 points to 24. They've only played each other twice. Back in 1990 was one, where Ireland won, 20 points to 18. And this was uh, Dawson. Ah, Dawson, you see, just ooh, just took a kick on the fingers, a wrap. And I caught a knuckle. Back around, seven. Well, if it's a question of playing the game, hide the ball. Ireland are winning it, hands down. Humphreys, the little chip, or oh, Driscoll in chase, he's done well. The Irish centre, Dawson, first man there. Tyranny. Wood gives chase, this is Albanese. Boysen, who sit tonight. It's a penalty, Argentina, Pichot wastes no time. Rolando Martin, good tackle by O'Kelly. Fernandez lobby. Penalty against Ar against Ireland, not retreating the 10 metres. And Argentina are coming back at the Irish. They certainly are. They're playing a good, loose game. They're taking the ball forward. They're really tight in defence. Ireland getting nothing off in defence. And uh, as we were saying, the Albanese, whenever he gets the ball, is an absolute threat. And I think, you know, again, the referee just be playing everything exactly by the rules and has really slowed things down. Here we see uh, Wood playing Albanese and just not sure whether he had the ball or not. The uh, penalty given there for the high tackle against Albanese. Argentina played advantage and were able to move the ball outright. Eventually, penalty, penalty being awarded. Ireland up by 10 and Fasada uh, has another opportunity to match three points. There's only uh, three or four metres inside Ireland's half. But it's the same technique. The eyes that take. Goal, and the score remains 15 points to nine. And 
that is the last kick of the first half, a storming half of rugby here in Lens for a place in the quarter-finals to meet France in Dublin next Sunday. And it's Ireland who lead Argentina at the interval by 15 points to nine. Five David Humphreys penalties, three penalties from Gonzalo It's been the battle of the goal kickers, David Humphreys and Gonzalo Quesada in the first half. The crowd would love a try, Argentina would love a try. They've only scored three in Rugby World Cup 99. Warren Gatland, the New Zealand-born former All Black, the coach of Ireland. And there's a touch of irony in that, in that Alex Wiley is coach for Argentina. Humphreys restarts. Pichot busy, waits for Sava. Calm and collected. But only as far as you know who it is, don't you? Keith Wood. Here he goes. But Argentina are making their tackles count. Tyranny. Kunigan. He's turned on the wrong side, but it's come back Ireland's way. David Humphreys now, Kevin Maggs, O'Shea, a good tackle on him. It was Santiago Phelan, the number six, with a good tackle on O'Shea, but it's going to be another penalty. Adjado with a new hairdo. David Humphreys has taken a bump, and that is the last thing that I want to see here. We do have Eric Elwood sitting on the bench. It is uh, Reggiado who's been penalised for using his hands. Yeah, Reggiado playing the ball on the ground. Here's Humphreys, collects a big tackle there. <laughs> Off uh, Sedesma, the Argentinian hooker. Um, Reggiado was as penalised from that rough, just uh, using his hands. You know. Humphreys has to now get up, take himself down and uh, work the kick. I say there was a touch of irony, Brendan, in uh, the Gatland-Wiley scenario. It suggested before this match, and uh, one of the uh, press boys told me, he'd read it, or he'd written it, that Alex Wiley was the reason, when he was the all-match coach, that Warren Gatland didn't get into the side in 91. And Gatland would love to get his revenge on Alex Wiley tonight. I think Gatland would take a victory of any sort. Ireland, but certainly for those sort of reasons, uh, as I said, uh, it's very interesting. Five, uh, five New Zealand uh, coaches of the World Cup sides uh, in this particular tournament. Be one of them all David Humphreys with attempt number six. His first of the second half. He hasn't missed in the match so far. And he still hasn't missed. Penalty goal number six. For David Humphreys, and he joins Grant Fox and Rob Andrew as players who have kicked seven, six penalties in a Rugby World Cup finals match. <laughs> Terrific take again by Malcolm O'Kelly, and he plays for St Mary's College. O'Shea with a pickup. And it's gone into touch. It was a spiralling kick from Conor O'Shea. Coming in his 34th match for his country. He's 
debut way back in 93 against Romania. Very interesting. He took the ball back into his 25 at that stage. It took him a while to put his foot to the touch to uh, get uh, somewhat uh, in field with the ball back to him very nicely. David Humphreys has gone into some sort of record books with his six penalties, but Masaba is up there with eight. Davidson it was who took the ball, left high. Tierney now. Da David Humphreys, that has gone a mile high. This is a tester for Corletto, and it was tapped back by Justin Bishop. Back there is Albanese for Argentina. He hasn't found touch, he's only found the Pinnigan. O'Shea, O'Shea fast one tackle, runs into Hassan, still with Ireland. Humphreys with the drop kick, is it good? It is good. David Humphreys is having some game for Ireland. A magnificent drop goal by the outside half. What a great strike from Humphreys, and he's been doing this all last season and uh, this season. Lovely strike. Good clean ball from Tierney here. Straight back. Humphreys knew he had to get some points. Down and away it goes. I think both both teams and both are half specifically recognizing the fact this is going to be a tight game. They can take points from this pressure on, they'll certainly take them. What a kick and display by Humphreys. O'Kelly. Tierney to his partner. Humphreys, the confidence there now is to use the left boot, but it's only found Corretto. No way past Matt Mostyn. The ball, the ball is free. O'Driscoll was perfectly entitled to go in for that ball. Bishop. Rolando Martin is in the outside half position. The tackle by O'Kelly. Ripped away now by Fernandez Lobe. Bishop. This is Ledesma, the hooker. Another storming drive by the Argentinians, and this Arbisu feeds out to Albanese. to Argentina, we've seen the signal before. Once the tackle has been made, you have to let the tackle player go. You can't hold him down, you're preventing him from playing the ball. And unfortunately, for Ireland, it's a penalty. Now this man shares the Rugby World Cup record of eight penalty goals, which is shared by Thierry Lacroix, France against Ireland in Durban, in the last World Cup, and also by Grant Gavin Hastings. Gonzalo Masada collects another chance now to add to his three he's kicked in this match. Here we see the penalty with Alvin Azen going in. And uh, Bishop tackling well, but they're not getting away from the man. He really needs to let him go, let the ball go loose. That's what the uh, difference in his going for. points between the two sides. And Posada prepares to make his tally 12 points. It's simple. And it's three points. And Argentina's ace marksman is on target with his fourth penalty. Terrific technique, stylish and successful. So it's the restart again by Humphreys. He shot underneath it. Almost charged down by McKinnigan. Hands off! It's with Paul Wallace. Tierney on the little narrow side. Humphreys trying to get his pass in. McKinnigan. Dawson's got his hands on it. So too Keith Wood. It's down now. Tierney. Wallace. Deep inside the Pumas 22, it's Wood. He's taken out three Pumas. Tierney, wave upon wave of attack. And Humphreys, it's just wide. There were men over, queuing up for a pass. Humphreys went for the drop goal. Tremendous work here by the Irish pack. 
taking the ball on, missed it by about a foot. A good build up from Ireland, and again, just recognise the importance of points. And uh, when you get in that sort of pressure situation, you've done a lot of work, you do need to get points in the world. For the first half, perhaps ran out of steam just a notch or two. But this man has seemed to have found yet another cylinder to drive on. For Kelly to Ward. Ward, oh, lovely slip pass to Justin Bishop. Ireland's forwards doing such good work. Humphreys, the long pass to O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll has broken through. The pass out to Mostyn. And Mostyn is bangled into touch. Ireland almost getting through. Yeah, very good build up there. Lovely pass from Humphreys. Good ball out to O'Driscoll. Very soon, he gets the his pace. Slips the man, goes through. Four feet in front. And, uh, Johnny Davidson wearing four for Ireland. Keith Wood finds his man, Davidson. Here he goes. A tackle by Phelan. Santiago Phelan with the first tackle. Penalty to Argentina. Keith Wood was tackled. He did not release the ball. Penalty. Here comes Martin for the Pumas. Pichot, Quesada. That's a huge kick by the outside half. Mostyn goes back and it beats him. Quesada has kicked that some 60, 65 metres from inside his 22. Great relieving clearance there, all right. Uh, here you can see, in fact, it's really quick to get up there. Uh, in fact, if he'd gone up just a bit more uh, purposefully for it, he may well have blocked it down. Casada's technique takes a lot of time. There's a big wind-up. He had got a block down against Wales, and now they another one there. But lovely clearance kick has given him 60 metres. Tierney shouts at his forwards. Keep walking, he says. Keep going. Wood and Davidson, two pairs of hands on the ball. Tierney now to Humphreys. That's nicely played by Ireland's outside half. He's on top of his game. Really is playing very well. Uh, kicking out of hand and from the ground, first pass. Here you have a lovely shimmy off the left. Creates a bit of space for himself and just decides they need uh, to get the advantage of territory. This is Martin Selsen, who will play for Northampton after the Rugby World Cup 99. One of the biggest men in the world is 130 kilograms, and he's coming on for Omar Hassan. Much travel, Hassan has been from Wellington, New Zealand, with ACT Brumbies, and now he's with Agile France, but Selso comes on. Ireland will have their work cut out now. Argentina signal their intentions with the big man coming on. Keelan is there, they're in six and it's ripped away by Rolando Martin, taken on by Alejandro Ayud, Bishop, Quesada, Artisu, the captain, breaking through and they've lost it, it's Humphreys, he can get a bit of pace on here, the outside half has done well, he finds O'Kinnigan, O'Kinnigan pops it back for O'Shea, Humphreys again was the catalyst for this. Here he goes. Lovely dummy there by Humphreys. Steps inside Casada. And off he goes. Bishop inside him. Finnegan outside. Offloads to Finnegan. Ball eventually comes back. This is going back to Harvey Zoo's initial break in the field. Taken by, down by Barney Bishop. Ball running loose. Gets to Humphreys. And again, you can just see here, lovely dummy, stepped inside, accelerates really well away from the line. Pass after the king again. No, 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 Holding on to the ball, it's a penalty to the Pumas. Arvizu, the Pumas captain, 
Little jink from the man who finds the fullback, and now it's two shots. A wonderful take by Gonzalo Longo, the number eight. This is dangerous for Ireland. Casada, though, goes back inside. Was that the right option? It's a great drive by Ayu, the five, and his lock partner, Hernandez Lobe. Tremendous surging play by Argentina, and it results in yet another penalty. And the Pumas ace marksman to line up his sights now for another cricket goal. Again, Ireland giving away the same penalty, tackling the man, not letting the man with the ball free to play it. Uh, that's what he, they, they've been blown about three times this game for that one. But you've got to admire the Argentina team when they get going, they get a drive forward, they tend to put a lot of pressure on. Nice and sniping run there by Pichot and Casada. Here we see the penalty, Pichot tackling the guy, holding on to his arms and the ball, and Dickinson quite right to blow that one. Very good break by Arbisu and supported by Corletti. Corletti and Pichot. What a live by scrum half he is. The South American kicking machine in action again. Oh, we rather punch that one. And this is Justin Fitzpatrick who's been sent down. Will he take his place on the field? There are a few nervous spectators in the shape of former Ireland internationals. Nigel Carr is here, Tony Ward is here, Brendan Mullen is here. This game is certainly not in the bag. A long, long way. Now again, you've got to admire Argentina. They, they play in fits and starts, but when they do play, they drive really well, break out of defence, a lot of pressure uh, on opposing sides, and they've been doing that very well in the last five or ten minutes. Certainly uh, a lot more rugby to be played tonight. Only twice before have these two countries met. One was a couple of months ago. Ireland won it 32-24. Then you have to go back to 1990. But Ireland won 20 points to 18. Argentina have never been in the quarterfinals of the World Cup. They've only ever won three games in Rugby World Cup. And here they are taking Ireland all the way. The incentive, of course, for tonight is the place in the quarterfinals to play France in Dublin on Sunday. <laughs> Two of Argentina's three wins in the Rugby World Cup have come this time against Samoa and Japan. Then we have to go back to 1987 when they beat Italy. Won by Finnegan, Humphreys, Max. Puma's defence is good. This is O'Driscoll, the little grubber kick. Corretto is there, the fullback has done ever so well. Giving him support is Ledesma, the hooker. That was well played by the hooker to give his young fullback the support he wanted. Pichot. Arbisu. Here come Argentina if he can collect it. Still with the Pumas, but it's a knock on. Arbisu, the the captain who plays his rugby in Grieve in France. Intelligent play by a man who's earned 65 caps for his country. Lovely play, very similar uh, style centres of Driscoll and RBC. Very unlucky, I didn't think that was a, a knock on at the end of the day. Very unlucky to get blown on. Tierney, O'Driscoll, lovely play. This is Conor O'Shea. Great tackle by his opposite number, Coveletto. What a good game this Argentina fullback is having, but it's a penalty to Ireland. The referee wants just a little pause here because Corletto it is who's injured. There he is, the uh, young 21-year-old student at the University of Buenos Aires. And as a replacement against Ireland in August. 
Monsieur Corletto is receiving a yellow card, and I can't tell you what it's for because the referee microphone seems to have gone down. So caution for Ignacio Corletto. will have the attacking line out. Keith Wood. Won by O'Kelly. O'Quinnigan peeling around the front. He's taken by Ledesma. And they've lost it. This is Martin Dishot. Albanese, he's been busy tonight. Good tackle by Kevin Maggs. Dishot again. Quesada. Back into the box it goes. Look who he's found. It's Keith Wood. Here he goes, the human train. <laughs> Penalty, though, against Argentina, and they are livid about that one. Alex Wiley looking on with some concern. <laughs> and the referee has been... <laughs> Very, very strict. Look at the number of penalties conceded. Brendan, the game is being played at one kick of the face. It's difficult for players in that tackle area. I think here, this Keith Wood comes in, actually falls the wrong side of the tackle. Lays it off there. I mean, there's uh, obviously the Argentinians get blown for competing with the ball, but in fact, there's a lot of arms in there. As you said, the, the pace of the game is very high. Uh, every single uh, infringement has been picked up on, and uh, maybe that's the way the World Cup referees have been instructed to referee it, but it's uh, certainly causing a lot of stops out rugby. Uh, the key points there for David Humphries. It's a magnificent seven for David Humphries. Seven penalty goals and a drop goal. And Ireland's points belonging to David Humphries, belonging to the men in green. It's 24-15. The replacement for Jeremy Davidson is so Robert Frank Casey, uncapped, this is his first cap for his country, it's on for Jeremy Davidson, the man from Black Rock College in Leinster, just 21 years of age, and a huge moment for him to come on here in loss against Argentina, Albanese is underneath it, can't take it, hassled by Bishop, it's that's another penalty, Diving in over the ball, the referee doesn't want Bishop to take it quickly, he'll call him back. Quesada. Jeremy Davidson took a knock in the first half and looked as if he was carrying that injury. Desmond taking his time. And Argentina have lost it, but it's not forward, says uh, the referee. Ireland knock it forward. And Argentina wins hard. Good battle going on this side. Reggiardo and Paul Wallace. Picked up by Longo. Taken by Dawson. Picked up now by Fernandez Lobe. Push up. Quesada, Arbisu, taken by Kevin Maggs. Martin wanted it, he's got it, Pichot wanted it. The Argentinians have it. Fernandez love it again. Look at O'Kelly, look at the work O'Kelly's putting in to stop his man. Pichot, it's the new man, Celso, a mountain of a man. Quesada, the big drive on now by Albanese. Tackled by Dawson, it was a twin attack. Arbisu, Arbisu inside to Casada, held by Humphreys. This is dangerous play by Argentina. They're attacking and looking for a score. Martin standing off. Tackled by Dawson. Picked up by Longo, the number eight. Pichot spins out another pass. Casada, Corletto, taken by Adrisco. Half taken by the Irish centre.
How long can Ireland defend this? Aradisu again, the Pumas captain, and it's a turnover again, they've lost it. Andy Ward. Amazing passage of play, and Ireland, would you believe, have been penalised. The referee telling them too many Irish players diving in for the ball, and Ireland are committing suicide with these penalties. Again, a similar, the thing about the penalties being given away is a lot of them are for similar offences. There you had the second man in, straight to the ground, roughly blowing it immediately. You see Andy Ward, who actually had stolen the ball off of an RBC pass. Keith Wood was in there, I think. Myself and Bob Casey. Bob Casey certainly seems to be on his feet. He's certainly done in. Social media. All that's going on behind this man. Gonzalo Casada. This is his seventh penalty goal. Casada makes it 24. Seven penalties from Argentina and a drop goal from the Irish outside half. But Casada is keeping the Pumas in touch. It's going to be a battle of nerves and concentration now. Ireland committing too many offences, giving away penalties. That's Pichon with the kick. Extraordinary role that Keith Wood is playing for the side of the match. The defence is handed back to give extra support to the uh, fullback of the two winners. And he's been uh, certainly covered a lot of ground tonight. Seven is Kieran Dawson from London Irish. Eight. Fiona Quinnigan from Ballymena, and up goes Malcolm O'Kelly from St Mary's College. Just inside the Pumas half. Ireland leading 24-18. Humphreys. This will be another one of those towering kicks for it. No, it's too long. It's Borletto. And the 21-year-old is good and safe. And he's had a good game. He's received the caution. Is merely for the technical events. Look at this. Aleto to Casada. It's not touched. Andy Ward. Andy Ward passed his hand from out of That's a tremendous play by the Irish flanker. On the Irish, on the Cumas 22, Keith Wood. Highlands forwards have done well. That's tyranny in there. O'Kelly with a pick up. Ireland still looking for a way through. Tierney now. Humphreys. Humphreys with the kick and it's bounced up the upright. And back goes Diego Albanese. This is astonishing. He's still going. Going back to it actually uh, played the ball. Walking off the post with a crossbar. Down Albanese actually brought it behind the goal. Line. So he had to run it in a sense. A cross behind there. Irish scrum right at the goal post. Humphreys with the drop goal attempt. Lovely strike, nice and easy. Here you can just see Albanese actually touch the ball. Didn't have an option to touch it down because the 22 had to play it. And a substitution for Argentina. One of the twins, the Pompeponi twins here. Felipe Compitone, wearing 17, he's on for Ignacio Corletto. He's 
good than that. And the scrummage with the replacement Justin Fitzpatrick has gone onto the loose head. That's because Paul Wallace is off the field. I'm not sure what his injury is. It's a big scrummage for Ireland and they've lost the initiative. It's a free kick to Argentina. This is Longo to Pichot. Pontepome and Salcio. How do you stop him? Pichot again. Contipome, Arbisu runs into Malcolm O'Kelly. Look at the speed with which Argentina are recycling. Rolando Martin, Reggiado. And they've made some 30 or 40 metres, Argentina. Tremendous play. They've got men over. Arbisu with the pass. And it was a thundering tackle by Matt Mostyn. That, I can assure you, was a try saving tackle from Matt Mostyn because it was a 3 to 1. And Matt Mostyn stopped it. Great play by Mostyn. Recognises he's outnumbered and just uh, comes in and hits ball and man. There's three men outside, and as you say, it's out the Argentina player. So certainly Mostyn calling it right there, coming in quickly, committing and getting ball and man. The 22 scouts are setting up the ball, huge mountain of a man. Argentina won a good loose ball after that, but Mastin came in, took man on board, the right decision. It's certainly safe to go there. What a World Cup Malcolm O'Kelly has had. He was born in Essex. Played 12 consecutive internationals on his debut for Ireland against New Zealand in 97. But then missed the whole of the 98 season. Five Nations with injury. But he has had one of his biggest games to have for Ireland, Malcolm O'Kelly. Ten minutes to go with injury time. Ireland leading 24-18. Here come Argentina again. It's in midfield. Pichot. Arbisu. What a danger he is. Longo. And then Desma throws the pass to Pichot. Pichot with a kick ball. Was he taken out? No, the referee says not. Booze from the Argentinian supporters around the ground. And it was not a foul. Not a foul. Lovely, lovely run here from Arbizu. Flicked the ball back in to Ledesma. Runs very nicely outside. Overhead, back to Pichot. He recognises he's going to be caught by Dawson. Chips ahead. Slightly late, but nothing really in it. I think the referee was right. Dawson well back. McQuinnigan also well back to cover. Back comes Paul Wallace to the fray. Justin Fitzpatrick, the blood replacement. <laughs> Kelly, I think it is, is going to come off. Well, Justin Fitzpatrick has come back on. And Reggie Corrigan is coming off. So it's Fitzpatrick, Wood and Wallace. And it's a massive scrummage for Argentina. And the scrum goes down. These are very, very nervous times. Martin Celso has been spoken to by the referee. Keep it up, he says. I don't want you going down. Pichot with the feed. The Pumas will get a shove on here. Look at Ireland now. Look at that scrummage. But Argentina win it. Come to Pome. Oh, it's the pass to Albanese. And Albanese is there. Diego Albanese has scored in this quarter-final playoff match his second try in Rugby World Cup, his sixth for his country. It might be the most important of his career.
Lovely piece of backline play with the Argentinians here. Beautiful ball right out to Alvarez. You'd have to say he's been running well all night. Just a simple overlap strategy. Final Brisco doesn't uh, get there in time. Lovely pass, Alvarez right out in space. Really the whole try made by Conor Don coming in from the far side. Giving Alvarez a bit of space. Brisco is a scoring tackle. And you'd have to say Alvarez has been playing well all night. Probably deserves a score now. Listen to this crowd, it's the French who are singing now. Three hundred points for Gonzalo Quesada in twenty one test matches, a magnificent striking rate. His country needs this kick. Six minutes to go. Quesada to put Argentina ahead for the first time in this match. Has he drawn it in? Yes, it has. It's a magnificent effort from Gonzalo Casada. Argentina lead 25-24. Great reception from this French crowd. Again, the try really made by Conor Don coming over from the far side, giving Alvanese a bit of space. He's been on fire all night. He's over in the corner. Casada, particularly enough, rattles the ball through the post. Ireland really have to get back very quickly now. 25 24 with less than six minutes showing in the clock. Kasaba with his first conversion from the Rugby World Cup 99, but he's kicked goals all over the park. And the only try of the most tense struggle coming as late as it has from Diego Albanese. This now is Felipe Contepolme. Rejado the prop. <laughs> Penalty against Ireland. One second, says the referee. It's a free kick, rather. Here come Argentina again. They've had a much better second half. Celso, huge man, tackled by. O'Kelly, and back they go, back goes Mostyn, and O'Shea, and the Bulls are going around the ground, I'm not sure what they're for. Certainly this French crowd has got behind the Argentina side in the last 10-15 minutes. There's Love here. went for it, but they've lost it. Humphreys, Kevin Mags, he's strong. It's a great tackle by Martin. Tierney runs across. He is collared. But Ireland still have the ball. Wood, because his scrum half is in there. How good a kick is that one? It's not bad. Back goes the try scorer, Albanese. He'll test O'Shea, it's a good take by the fullback. O'Shea through two tackles, but he's picked out then by Fernandez Lobby. Humphreys. It's Mags. A wonderful tackle by Aldu, the second row. This is Casey, Robert Casey, his first game for his country. Tierney, Humphreys, back to the scrum half. Was it forward? The crowd thought so. Eric Miller has come onto the ground. The first time we've seen him, he's a replacement. And Andy Ward, we believe, has gone off. That was Dawson. Oh, Ireland and keeping their, not keeping their eye on the ball. It's a tense, tense part of the match. The seconds, the minutes are taken away. Argentina playing it very cleverly. Ireland need to get into their uh, into the Argentina half. Here we see a tackle. That's the first defence by Argentina. Good at that. Ards isn't going to make any headway there. No, no way through. Uh, great tackle there by Luke. Uh, in the second row. Look at Argentina bench. Really holding up. This would be a huge win for them. But Ireland are playing it wrong at the moment. We need to get down into their 25. Put pressure on them. Get within striking distance for a drop goal or a penalty or, or uh, 
set themselves up for the At the moment, Argentina are playing it correctly. They're keeping everything in their hands. Eric Miller wearing 19 is on the park. Argentina look with more possession than the second half in Ireland. Eric Miller, the 97 line is on for Andy Ward. And look at the Pumas scrimmage. Look at that. And they've got another penalty. And Irish heads might drop at the sight of Casada as he comes up. The clenched fist from Martin Celso. Reggiado the prop. Well, what can you say? They, you know, we know the Pumas have a very strong scrum. There's Tony Lennon, Ryan Gaffin, Philip Lennon. Certainly from their perspective, uh, they know Ireland really needs to get a converted score now. But with the Argentinian scrum incredibly strong, just tightened everything up there in Ireland, but of course you can see the penalty. Very strong scrum for Argentina. Listen to this crowd. Gonzalo Casada, he has missed one penalty kick, but his touchline conversion to the only try of the match is with Argentina in front. This the chance to extend that lead. Casada kicks, and Casada has kicked the three points. It's 21 to 24, and they stretched it beyond Ireland's grasp. Lenehan, Donaher, and Gatlin watch nervously. Four points in it. We've had the 80 minutes. The 80 minutes are up. It's now referee's time. Humphreys. Taken magnificently by Aloud. Pichot. Felipe Contepome. Keith Wood. Something extraordinary has got to happen now for Ireland. How do they keep their heads? Miller with the pickup. They're running across field. Ireland must regroup, regather. Casey dumped. And Argentina have stolen it. That was Celso. Here's Pichot. Steals a pass to Ledesma. Ledesma back inside to Albanese. They can't stop this man. Albanese is leaving his magic. A wonderful run by the Argentinian left winger. Here they come again. It's Gonzalo Longo, the number eight. Argentina are finishing this game and they're looking like winners. Time running out for Ireland. It's certainly up the pace, Argentina. They're playing with a lot of confidence now. Pack is absolutely tight and Albanese, as I said, been on fire all night. Got the score. Full of winning. It's Ireland scrummage. They dearly have to get away from here. Tierney, Tom Tierney with a B. He won't want that to go into touch. He wants it to stay in field. It's Casada. Oh, Casada has a magnificent drop goal. But he has one That's got to be the end, end of it. And an astonishing six minutes has been added. We've already had almost two minutes of injury time. It always promised to be a dramatic match in loss between Ireland and Argentina. Six minutes to go. We've got another six minutes to go. Certainly got that. And Ireland really have to get into the Argentinian half. Argentinian half. They're trying to do it now. O'Shea. Kevin Mags in there. Good ripping work from O'Quinnigan. Tierney, Humphreys, Miller. Look at the tackles going in on the Ireland boys. Tierney. Humphreys, the little dummy, and taken down by Simone in the centre. Still with Ireland. Tierney, Kevin Mags. There's no way through there. O'Driscoll, oh, he's got pace, the young 20-year-old. It's going to be Ireland's put in. How important is that? Yeah, very important. I said Ireland really need to get further down the field, get themselves into an attacking position. Argentina are playing their defence very cleverly now. The best Ireland have done in the last 10 minutes is stay at halfway. They need to play the ball down now. 
they, I'd say Humphreys now has to move this and look for the seven points. That's the halfway line for Quinnigan in control. Leaves it now for Tierney. Humphreys, Kevin Maggs, and stolen by Felipe Contepomi. He stepped out of the tackle. And Contepomi might go all the way. But Quinnigan was back there. The captain, the very last line of defence, and Felipe Contepomi almost did a Houdini. Yeah, he's played very well since he came on. Again, Humphreys, Ireland under pressure here. Mags throwing the ball as an intercept. Hunter Pony takes it and takes off. Ireland under pressure, having to move the ball, having to create something. And Argentina very much on the front foot. Wood must make the throw a good one. O'Kelly, he's been a tower, a tower of strength in that line out. And Ireland have won themselves a penalty. Penalties have come thick and fast in this match. David Humphreys has kicked seven penalties and a drop goal for Ireland. Argentina have scored a try. Diego Aldenese. The conversion by Castada and seven penalties from the outside half. Nineteen for Ireland is Eric Miller. It's won by Dionne Quinnigan, Humphreys taking it flat, Mags. O'Driscoll, oh, that's a big hit, and it was late. And it was Reggiado, Maurizio Reggiado, who's going to be spoken to by the referee. It was an intended hit. Certainly had its effect, and it's O'Driscoll who's receiving treatment. Yeah, that was a big hit there by Rodrigo. I think he just uh, he was beaten for pace, certainly. O'Driscoll chipped him, went to go through, and Rodrigo not only stopped him, but uh, took him out of the game with a very serious shoulder. That's a yellow card. I think it's a problem. I don't think it's a decision to make. They go to the touchline. They need to get the headphones at a minimum. Humphreys. There he goes, the shoulder that's gone in on Brian O'Driscoll, and he is felled. Now look at Ireland's call, look at it. This is going to be the Irish line, an extraordinary line for all of them. Every green shirt on the park is in there, apart from Tierney, and even he's hanging on to the end. And Ireland could make their way to the goal line. Unbelievable defence from the Pumas, and it's a penalty. Ireland holding on to the tackled man. Argentina committing the offence. Yeah, extraordinary 15 man line out there. Used by Gatlin before when he coached uh, Hannock, and I think Humphreys again will go for the touchline. Ireland have one more opportunity, they need to get it five points off us. Ireland 24, Argentina 28. An extra six minutes allowed. Up goes O'Kelly. No more than two minutes remaining. Ireland need the ball. They must score. They have to use it from here. O'Quinnigan stopped by Rolando Martin. Bodies all over the park. Wallace takes it from Tierney. There was a reception committee for him. Tierney. O'Driscoll again. Ireland's forwards. So brave. Driving in. Miller waits. Leaves it for Tierney. The short pass. It's claustrophobic in there. The play still goes on. Tierney. How can Ireland score from here? That's Robert Casey. Tierney again. And it's another penalty. Can Argentina withstand this onslaught? Here they go, O'Kelly standing still. Was he expecting the pass? 
Argentina with bodies on the wrong side. Three of them, says the referee, three of them diving in. Ireland must score. Keith Wood, he's having a go. A huge tackle by Longo. Still a penalty, and if one or two more penalties are committed, it could be a penalty try. How dramatic would that be? I think, I think the referee has in, already indicated next ball out or dead is uh, the final whistle, so Ireland got to keep it alive. Wood, Keith Wood, he's a yard short. Tierney ripping it for Wallace, he can't get there. They're battering the line, and the referee has blown for the end of the match. And amazing scenes in loss. Argentina have made the quarterfinals of the World Cup for the first time in their history. They have beaten Ireland in loss in this quarterfinal playoff by 28 points to 24. Seems like you really cannot believe. Gonzalo Quesada with seven penalties. The only try from Diego Alvarez converted by Quesada. Seven penalties and a drop goal by David Humphreys was simply not enough on the night. And it has finished in high emotion and high drama. Argentina will play France in Dublin on Sunday. Kelly, he tried his heart out. And scenes here in Lance that will linger long in the memory for Argentinian players, their supporters, and for the Irish, of course. Ireland believed that they would have gone back to Dublin, gone back home to play in the quarterfinals. But Ireland's World Cup is over. No one tried harder than Keith Woods, no one tried harder than Paul Wallace. They all tried. They gave it their all, it just wasn't to be. And it's a disconsolate Irish side that leaves the field here at last. Martin Celso goes to his supporters. Argentina have made history, their own history, by becoming quarter-finalists for the first time. The scenes are simply amazing. Even the French supporters got behind the humours in the end. There is Augustine Pichot, Argentina's live by a scrum half. And a lap of honour now for the Argentina players. Mejado and Longo, Alouba and Fernandez Bobe, the old man they found in a magnificent forward effort, it was a confrontation we knew it would be. And Casada simply picked up what was left to kick the goals in a one try but I'll be Yeah, as I say, you know, a big confrontation up front. Fair credit to the Argentinians, they played a lot better behind than we might have thought. Got the one try. All penalties besides that, so in that case, he's deserved the victory. Yeah, tough blow for Ireland. Really, from their perspective, not making the quarterfinals is a big disappointment. Victoria Argentina 28-24 sobre Irlanda. Argentina está en cuartos de final. Tengo, estoy rodeado de todos los jugadores y voy a empezar hablando en orden con Diego Albanese. Diego, ¿hasta cuándo vamos a seguir? No sé, la verdad que esto es increíble, ¿no? Eh, nos propusimos en los últimos, en el entretiempo, dijimos, bueno, son los últimos 40, entreguemos todo, dejemos todo y creo que se vio, creo que eh, no solo jugamos estático, creo que tuvimos buenos movimientos, vinimos en profundidad. Y bueno, la verdad que una alegría para este equipo increíble. Mario, según Alejandro y según mi opinión, fuiste una de las figuras del partido. 
¿Se basó este triunfo otra vez en una gran defensa? Yo creo que hubo gran defensa como en todos los partidos, pero hoy más que nunca se atacó, se salió jugando de todos los penales, eh, los tres del fondo contraatacaron todos los tiros y faltaba que el, que el referee se pusiera a taclear, porque si no, no nos podían frenar. Parecía que el partido no terminaba más. Jugaron 49 minutos y terminaron con penales en contra, con penales en contra. ¿Qué te pasaba por la cabeza? No, no entraba, no entraba ni en pedo, no entraba ni en pedo. Omar, jugaste un muy buen partido también. ¿Esperabas esto cuando llegaron aquí a la Copa del Mundo? Bueno, la verdad es que yo tenía mucha confianza en el equipo, sabía lo que los jugadores eh, hemos estado entrenando todos este, todo estos años, eh, y bueno, yo me tenía mucha confianza y creo que todos teníamos confianza. Quizás los demás, eh, quizás no, no, no pensábamos llegar a esta instancia y jugando tan bien, creo que vamos de menor a mayor y bueno, como ha dicho Lisando en un momento, de, después de haber pasado a la primera ronda estamos para cualquier cosa, ¿no? ¿Se fue a marcar San Martín y te tocó bailar con la más fea cuando entraste? No, creo que eh, era un partido muy duro, se veía de afuera, estábamos muy, muy nerviosos, lo del banco estábamos muy atentos y sabíamos que nos podía llegar a entrar en cualquier momento y bueno, tuve la suerte de entrar y, y poder hacer un buen partido creo.